thank you for joining us on today's episode of Tax Matters, our Chamaka Ohaochi. Let us begin with this reminder that time is running out for companies that have been granted extension to file companies' income tax returns and pay, which fell due on June 30, 2022. That's talking about companies' income tax filers whose year of assessment is January to December, in this case, 2021. Filing and payment is now 31st August 2022. And talking about filing and paying taxes in due time, accountants, auditors, and tax consultants do have a very big role to play in guiding their clients in matters relating to tax compliance. This came out vividly at a meeting hosted by the Federal Inner Revenue Service at which three of the foremost bodies in the field of accounting and taxation were present, talking about the CITN, ICANN, and ANAN. Chief host was the executive chairman FRS, who seized the occasion to call on professional bodies in the regulation of tax practice to lead the conversation on matters of tax policies and tax laws in the country. The meeting, or cost if you like, was held to discuss implementation of an MOU on standardization of tax practice in Nigeria, signed in 2021. What is the aim of the MOU? We are here this afternoon to look at where we are on the MOU that uh, three of you signed last year on how to work together to move a task, uh, for task operation or compliance in uh, Nigeria forward. It will promote efficiency among task uh, practitioners. And uh, of course, the need to eliminate quackery is a major challenge that uh, the professional bodies are facing. There are a lot of people doing untoward things that are bringing bad names to some of your professional body, unknown to you, the chief executive that are up there. In his own remarks, Executive Chairman FRS called on the professional bodies to work hand in hand with the FRS to deepen institutional framework through qualitative reporting and effective representation of their clients. Our meeting here is to deepen professional relationship among our foremost professional bodies, CITN, Akan, and ANA. This is critical in the regulation of tax practice in our dear country, and to further consolidate on the gains of an MOU that was signed in the year 2021. FRS is taking this very seriously, particularly the implementation of the MOU because of the far reaching implication on task compliance in our country. Meeting the three foremost professional bodies in Nigeria is exciting and homecoming for us as more than 5,000 of your members are in our employment. Our professional bodies need to speak on matters of tax policies and tax laws, especially on proposals to annual finance bills. We also urge you to help the service to deepen institutional framework, truth, quality reporting, and effective representation of clients by our professional colleagues. We need to stem the tides in improving financial reporting to reduce the spread of copy and paste financial reporting system as we experience today in Nigeria. Speaking further. FRS has adopted a new focus to tackle financial reporting concerns. One of it is to create new departments of professional accountants, analysts, lawyers, and other specialists that are on raveling financial reporting issues through data mining to reveal non-disclosures, willful defaults, and tax fraud cases. These are the areas of focus of these departments. One, intelligence, strategic data mining and analysis. 
two special crimes, three tax incentive management, which are all department in the FRS today. On adopting renewed strategies to deter financial reporting concerns. What we are doing in that case is to review the data from automatic exchange of information and two, which we want to achieve by this important meeting today is accreditation of task force authors and auditors in FRS. Practice directions from High Court and Court of Appeal for speedy court processes as well as in-depth tax examination. The presidents of the three bodies commended the FRS chairman for showing leadership in pushing for and enabling a resolution of the squabbles between the three bodies. We are stakeholders in the economy of this nation. And uh, if we fail to collaborate and cooperate, we destroy what we are trying to build. Do you provide goods and services? Then you must answer these important questions. Are you registered for VAT? Do you charge VAT on the goods and services you provide? Do you keep records of all your transactions? Do you file VAT returns? Do you remit VAT collected to government coffers? If your answer to any of these questions is no, then you are breaking the law. The law demands total compliance. Therefore, you must register for VAT. You must charge VAT on goods and services. You must file VAT returns. And you must remit all VAT collected on behalf of government within 21 days to the bank nearest to you. To do otherwise is a crime punishable everywhere in the world. VAT is prescribed by the law. Do the right thing. Collect and pay VAT. This message is from the FIRS. It pays to pay your tax. The Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria presents 11 CRIT and Zonal Task Conference, Lagos 2022. Theme, Presumptive Tax Regime and ICT in Optimizing Revenue Generation. Date, 20th to 22nd July 2022. Venue, Oriental Hotel, Victoria Island, Lagos. Chief Host, Chief Addition at the IMNIFC FCI, President, the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria CITN. Guest of Honor, Mr. Mohamed Nami, FCTI, FCNA, Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, FRS. And Mr. Yodele Suber, FCA, FCTI, Executive Chairman, Lagos Internal Revenue Service, LRS. The lead paper presenter is Mr. Arba Polonso, FCFCTI, Managing Consultant, Pedabo and Associates. The conference fee, members 30,000 Naira, non-members 35,000 Naira, virtual participants 15,000 Naira. Registration can be done via CITN Southwest Conference. .org .ng. Attendance at this conference attracts 16 credit hours. Announcer, Alaji Adiola Gunguleri, FCAFCTR, Chairman, CITN Southwest Zona District, Barrister Austin Elo, FCTI, Local Organizing Committee Chairman, Dr. Yemi Sonny, FCFCTI, Conference Director, CITN, Developing the Tax Profession. Welcome back. In the days immediately following the Salah holiday, the airwaves came alive with the story of the decision of the FIRS and the Joint Tax Board to commence enforcement exercise on defaulting taxpayers who did not or did but failed to fully participate in the Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme, otherwise known as VATES, which was introduced in June 2017. We we'll begin this segment with a clip from our first episode on VATES, aired in the first week of July 2017. On Thursday, the 16th of March 2017, the Federal Minister of Finance, Dr. Mrs. Kemi Adioshun, briefed the National Economic Council. Now you know that the National Economic Council comprises of the Vice President, who by virtue of the Constitution is the head of NEC, and all the Tassi State Governors and some other important stakeholders like the central bank governor. The minister briefed the NEC on the state of the economy, including the tax economy. And as part of that briefing, in the course of that briefing, the minister introduced a novelty into the Nigerian tax system, tax amnesty for tax defaulters. It is called Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme, 
on Thursday, the 29th of June 2017, the federal government of Nigeria rolled out the implementation program for VATES, Voluntary Assets Income Declaration Scheme, under which individual taxpayers who have defaulted in paying their taxes over the years can come forward voluntarily, declare their assets without fear of prosecution and with waiver of interest and penalty. Acting President Professor Yemi Oshibajo, who we told you earlier, is the chairman of the National Economic Council, presided over the launching of VATES at a well-attended ceremony that took place at the presidential villa, Aso Rock, Abuja. For several weeks and months, in several episodes, we continued to talk VATES to support the government initiative. Professional bodies, as well as accounting and tax consulting firms, organized various seminars and workshops to enlighten the public on VATES. The very second episode of Tax Matters on VATES captured one such event, an interactive session organized by PwC on VATES and You. It was PwC's contribution to the efforts of the government in launching the VATES program. It had in attendance a high quality audience and in fact had the full support of the Lagos State Government. Immediately after the keynote address, a panel was constituted on VATES and you. Before VATES, the Federal Inland Revenue Service had in 2016 introduced a tax amnesty scheme consisting of waiver of penalty and interest on tax liabilities from 2013 to 2015. This came up at the panel session at the PwC seminar. So the FRS um, introduced a tax amnesty scheme late last year. Um, how is this VAID scheme different from that FRS scheme? And more importantly, why should anyone comply with this? Is this not a trap? Late last year, the FRS introduced um, maybe a scheme, maybe it's just um, um, an opportunity for many taxpayers to pay, mostly corporate taxpayers, to pay VAT, withholding tax, CIT, and get waiver of interest and penalty. Now, this was limited to just about three years, 13 to 15. And the period for the remediation was very limited as well. Um, so, VAT is different in the sense that on one hand, this is all encompassing. So, it's not limited to FRS taxes. Uh, as you heard already, this is a collaboration between the federal government and all 36 states. Uh, so, it covers individual taxes and so on and so forth. Number two, this is not limited to things that we already know and people that are already in the tax net. Uh, it covers what we know, what we don't know, the one we know but you haven't told us completely and not truthfully, including assets that you have locally and abroad. It covers all manners of taxpayers, individuals, families, corporate. Now this is very different because one, we have the executive order to back this up and the fact that as a result of the automatic exchange of information, and the agreement that Nigeria has signed up to, uh, from common reporting standard to MCA and, and the long list I don't want to bore you with, uh, coupled with the intelligence we have within Nigeria, from BVN to guys who pay school fees of kids, abroad, which by the way is not bad, uh, feel free to pay school fees, but just need to try and you know, pay the tax as well from where the income came from, uh, as well as whistleblowing policy. Now, if you put all of this together, it's not a question of whether we will find you out. It's a question of when we do find you out. No criminal prosecution, no tax audit, no investigation. Just come out, declare those on declared income, and pay the principal sum. And the icing on the cake, you have the opportunity to negotiate to pay those principal taxes, the principal sum, in three years. No matter how you look at this, it is positive. Because already the tax laws are there, and if you don't comply, the penalties are supposed to apply. Um, so if government was to enforce immediately, then a lot of people will be, um, will be out of pocket. They have to pay taxes, they have to pay penalties, they have to pay interest, some have to be imprisoned. It's something that should be embraced. That's from our archives. The tax amnesty under VAID scheme was initially meant to last for nine months, but was later extended by three months, making one full year, 12 months. 
As we said in the introduction, the tax authorities are embarking on a post-vate exercise. What that means and what it entails will be our focus in this and a few episodes to come. To get a sense of what to expect in the coming weeks, we have spoken to several stakeholders, tax advisors, revenue officials at state and federal levels. We begin with Mr. Albert Florenshaw, Managing Consultant, Pedable Professional Services, who was closely involved in the introduction and implementation of VITS way back in 2017. Joining us on today's episode of Tax Matters is Mr. Albert Florenshaw. He is the Managing Consultant, Pedable Professional Services. Mr. Florencio, thank you for joining us on Tax Matters. Thank you, Amaka. It is always my pleasure. Thank you, sir. So we are looking at VATES and matters arising. Now, we are aware that VATES was introduced in Nigeria in 2017. Could you please share with us the origin of VATES? Okay. VATES is the Voluntary, income, uh, voluntary Asset and Income Declaration Scheme uh, that was introduced in Nigeria in 2017 by order 004, you know, of uh, uh, 2017. The purpose of the scheme was to uh, give opportunity for uh, taxpayers and individuals, companies, to declare their assets and income, and then, of course, that will, and pay the appropriate tax on the, on the income. Uh, and the objective was that uh, when you do that, you'll be exempted from investigation, from audit and of course the uh, penalty and interest uh, that is applicable to those uh, uh, for late payment. Uh, that was actually, uh, did not, uh, VAT did not originate from Nigeria. Nigeria is not the first to introduce such a, a scheme. Uh, in 2006, 1st August, uh, the World Bank uh, actually formally approved you know, the, the voluntary uh, disclosure uh, program. And of course in Nigeria, yeah, around 2016, there was this amnesty program for 45 days where mm -hmm. taxpayers were required to uh, pay their outstanding taxes uh, to be able to uh, exempt them from uh, a penalty and interest. So it is not a surprise that um, in 2017, particularly when government was trying to widen the tax net, uh, widen the tax base, bring uh, taxpayers into the tax net and also uh, give some amnesty, more or less, so that um, more people can uh, come into the base. It was introduced and was signed into law by uh, the vice president then, acting as the, as the president, the executive order on VATE, order 004 of 2017. Okay, thank you very much, sir. We heard you mention order, executive order 004. I mean, um, is that or was that the legal basis for VATE? Okay, so, uh, VAT is um, just a scheme to encourage uh, taxpayers who have not been compliant to come into the tax net. You know, it was not um, a new tax law. You know, the under underlying taxes that were in existence, backed up by the existing provisions, were covered by that VAT, which are the in personal income tax for individuals, company income tax for companies, Petroleum profit tax for companies engaged in petroleum operation. Uh, we also have the transaction taxes of value of uh, value added tax, as well as even the obligation to uh, to uh, remit withholding tax, so deduction of tax. You know, those are the taxes that were covered by by VAT, including capital gains tax, where you dispose of your asset and, uh, and you make a gain. You know, that was also part of the taxes that were covered uh, by VAT. And so for all of those taxes, if you have not been fully compliant as at that time, you were required to um, file your returns by completing the uh, VAT form and then uh, to the appropriate relevant tax authority, individual to the state where they are resident, the state authorities, wife or companies to the Federal Inland Revenue uh, Service. That was the, uh, those are the taxes that were covered by that provision. So it was basically for all tax types? Definitely, all tax types, both um, personal income tax and company income tax. All right, okay. yeah. thank you very much. 
Now, with the level of information available to tax authorities pre-VATES, now, was VATES really necessary at all? Why did we even need VATES in the first place? Okay. So, like I said, VATES' objective was to widen the tax base and, of course, to generate revenue. Those are the objectives of VATES. And so, as at that time, and even up to now, um, we still need to widen the tax base. The Nigerian tax to GDP ratio remains around 6%. And so we are still far from, uh, from compliance. And you know that um, in Nigeria and several other countries, we operate what is called the self-assessment scheme, where you, you know, disclose your income, uh, compute your tax, file your return, and pay the appropriate tax. That is self-assessment. So that, you know, uh, in itself, give a lot of uh, um, responsibility to the taxpayer to self-assess themselves. And so, uh, with the record that um, there has been non-compliance with that self-assessment scheme, quite a number of companies were not filing returns, individuals were not filing returns, the high net worth were not disclosing their income, several Nigerians have income, you know, abroad, which have not been subjected to tax in Nigeria, particularly where you are resident in Nigeria, and uh, there are no ta uh, tax treaty to exempt uh, such income. So, VAT was necessary so that um, you can um, genuinely, you know, disclose those income, pay the appropriate tax, and then you can now spend the, f the money the, the way you like since, since you have already disclosed it and paid tax. Uh, and government, of course, will have also gotten their own fair share of uh, those income. So this was definitely necessary to legitimate, I mean, to make some of those income uh, that were more or less illegitimate where they have been the start off to be to be freely utilized. Was VATES actually meant to be a one-off exercise or a continuous process? We ask this because we wonder why the sudden move to revive VATES four years after the window closed. Okay, so VATES, like I said, is a, a time-limited scheme that was required to, you know, give taxpayers the opportunity to disclose what they have not been disclosing. So it's, it's time limited. Like I said, the VAT period is from 1st of July 2017 to latest 30th of June 2018. Okay, that is the period within which we are supposed to make the declaration. And the declaration is better, like I just said, is those your income and asset for the period 2011 to 2016. Okay, so, uh, and um, it was expected that um, after 2018 June, those who have failed to comply were supposed to be prosecuted, were supposed to be uh, uh, assessed to tax. Uh, government promised that, uh, or said that information were being mined concerning individuals and companies that have not been disclosing their income. And so they were supposed to make those information available to the tax authority, uh, the Project Lighthouse, that was set up by the Minister of Finance then, was to mine information. And um, the aftermath of uh, VAID was supposed to be more serious than even during VAID, but nothing happened. And so to come back to VAID now, uh, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to uh, prosecute those who uh, declared and failed to pay, which you don't really need VAID to do that, because uh, if you have failed to comply, or you even fail to pay, it, it is assumed that you didn't declare for VATES at all because you must declare honestly, truthfully, and pay the taxes. Uh, at that time, it gave the opportunity to pay the tax over 36 months. It is well over 36 months now. And so if you have not paid, uh, tax authority have the right to uh, pursue the payment and require you to make uh, the payment. Okay, and so one we also wonder what has the tax authority been doing since then? both states and federal. So, um, of course, it's within their power to say, you declare so much, you have not paid. Please, can we have our money? There's nothing wrong with that. But the question is, what happens to those who fail to disclose at that time? To those who fail to take the opportunity? Okay? And you don't need VATES even to pursue them as, I, as of now. There are provisions, like I said, VATES is not a tax law per se. It is just a, an amnesty program which was required to implement or to enhance the implementation of the existing provision of the law, the personal income tax law, 
there are provisions in there for you to pay your tax as at when due, the company income tax, the petroleum profit tax, there are provisions. So vase or no vase, the authorities, both state and federal, can go after the non-compliant taxpayer and require them to pay. What are we trying to do with post fades? Hmm. So many questions. For answers, Mr. Fuller Rachel will still be with us next episode, as well as Mr. Taiwo Oyedele of PwC. Of course, talking fades. And in subsequent episodes, a long line of state and federal revenue officials. Thank you for watching. See you next week.